Thank you very much for um, uh, that I'm being here. Um, I'm very grateful to receive the award. Um, and also on behalf of my um, supervisor, Geert Wanten. Um, I'm glad uh, that winning this award uh, gives me the opportunity to send my um, uh, study here for the patients that, uh, that the research was meant for. Um, and hopefully my research will give you also some new information and some new insights about catalog solutions. All right. Um, well, my name is Yannick Wouters and I am a doctor and also researcher from the Roapark University Medical Center in Nijmegen in the Netherlands. And um, we have form performed the last couple of years a randomized controlled trial um, in several countries. Um, and uh, we did that uh, where we compared catalog solutions to catalog solutions Tauridine and saline in patients on home parental nutrition to prevent catheter sepsis in these patients. Um, well, first of all, the study was sponsored by Geislich. This is the manufacturer of uh, Tauridine, uh, and they call their, uh, uh, their medicine Tauricept. First, I want to introduce the cat the sepsis part a little bit more by a case that we had in our hospital. Uh, it's about Mrs. B. She is uh, 35 years old, uh, a woman and a mother of three children. And she had uh, until recently no medical history of any kind. But three months uh, ago, she was hospitalized uh, because she had severe abdominal pain. And it turned out she had a mesenterial thrombosis, which means that her uh, blood vessels to the bowels were occluded. And for this, she needed extensive surgery. She got a lot of resections of her bowels and eventually she remained with a uh, short bowel syndrome and high output stoma. Um, because she couldn't eat because of the high output stoma, um, she received a central venous catheter and uh, she started uh, training for home parental nutrition. So after three months, uh, she was discharged home Hopefully, that was the end of her period of sickness, uh, and she was trying to rebuild her self-confidence in her own body and also uh, yeah, in, in the aesthetic techniques that she had to learn now uh, because of the home parental nutrition. But uh, unfortunately, after two weeks at home, she became ill. Uh, she got malaise, fever and chills, and she was again hospitalized. Uh, she was admitted to the hospital, and it turned out she had a catheter sepsis. Um, based on a uh, Staphylococcus aureus infection, which is a bad, a bad monster. And, um, well, she needs to uh, receive a lot of weeks uh, antibiotics uh, and also her, her catheter was removed. Um, well, I think those cases are not one of its kind. I think a lot of patients have experienced in the past uh, bloodstream infection. I'm not sure, are there any people here in the room that have suffered from a catheter sepsis? Yeah, I see some hands, yeah. Well, that's also what we see in our centers in uh, Europe. Uh, every patient experiences about one sepsis every one to five years. And of course, there are several measures, measures to decrease the ca these catheter sepsis. And I think on this list, um, the training to perform aseptic techniques is the most important one, um, but there are, all, uh, there are also other measures such as antimicrobial filters, uh, topical antimicrobial uh, agents, and uh, also systemic antibiotics. But no measure sufficiently is effective to prevent all these catheter sepsis. So there are still uh, catheter sepsis left in patients. Um, so, what else do we have? Um, well, the use of catalog solutions has been advocated to prevent catheter sepsis in patients on home parental nutrition. What is a catalog solution? Uh, well, you can see it here in the animation uh, below. We have a syringe with uh, the lock solution inside of it and we uh, connect it with a catheter. And after that, we instill the lock solution into the catheter. And now it should have some preventive effect on bacteria that try, of course, to invade the catheter. <laughs> but, yeah, well, it doesn't work uh, in this situation. Well, there are many types of lock solutions. Uh, you see them here. There are antibiotics, such as vancomycin, 
anticoagulants such as heparin and also antiseptic agents such as ethanol like uh, was uh, told before in the uh, last presentation. But however, most of these log solutions have been abandoned um, because of side effects or damage to the catheter, in, uh, such as in the case of ethanol. Ethanol isn't recommended anymore by the aspirin guidelines, the European guidelines. Um, the development of microbial resistance, we can see that in antibiotics, of course, or there's just lack of effect, uh, as we can see in heparin or also ethanol. So the question remains, what, what else is left? Well, in Europe, we have two, um, two log solutions left. We use uh, taurodyne or we use uh, saline. Uh, saline is also used, uh, I think, here in uh, America. Um, the advantages of taurodyne is that it is a potent antiseptic agent. Um, it, has, it has an activity against both bacteria and also yeast uh, because it reacts with the cell wall of the bacteria and destroys it. Um, it is also a non-toxic agent uh, because the uh, taurodyne degrades into uh, non-harmful um, products like uh, carbon dioxide, water or taurine, that is an amino acid that you have in your body. Uh, there are to date no reported side effects. There is no bacterial resistance because it is an antiseptic agent, not an antibiotic agent. And it works in the HPN setting. We have uh, proven that several years ago uh, when we uh, compared taurine with heparin. Um, saline is also non-toxic. Uh, there are no side effects. Uh, and it is very cheap. But the question is, does it work? Um, it has never been proven that saline prevents infections in patients. So that's why we compared now taurodine versus saline. We did this in a multi-center study. And, um, um, well, the centers that participated were in Denmark. There were two in Denmark. Uh, there was one, you can see it over there, in Israel one in Italy, in the Netherlands, and also in the United Kingdom. Um, and the patients that could be included in the study were male or female, between 18 or 80 years, and uh, they had to have a benign underlying disease leading to intestinal failure. And uh, they had needed as well at least two bags of nutrition or fluids per week. They were subsequently randomized which means that the patients were divided over groups, over taurodine and saline, just by coincidence. Um, so, to taurodine or saline. And they were also blinded, just like the investigators. This means that the patients and also the investigators didn't know what medication the patients received. Uh, at the end, in taurodine, 52 patients were included, and in saline, 50 patients were included. And the patients were followed for one year, in which the patients had to use the catalog solution during the time they didn't use um, the catheter for effusion of home parental nutrition or fluids. Um, the most important outcome of this study is the catheter sepsis between taurodine and saline. That's what it is about. But there are, of course, other outcomes, and I've picked the two important ones, the removal of catheters, and also the safety, of course, of both the products of taurine and, and saline. Well, the baseline characteristics of the patients were similar. Uh, I have uh, summarized them here in uh, some uh, slides. And uh, what we saw were uh, that 40 uh, males were included in the trial and 62 in, uh, females in the trial. Um, the average age of all the patients was about 52 years. Um, the cause of intestinal failure was in 60 patients a short bowel syndrome and in 29 patients a dysmotility disorder. And the other uh, causes were, for example, intestinal fistulae or uh, extensive mucosal diseases. Uh, the catheters that were used were in 57 patients a Hickman catheter and in 24 patients a Broviac, but there were also patients with a big line or a, a subcutaneous port. Um, what was uh, interesting to see is that 50% of all the patients had had a uh, catheter sepsis in the past. Well, I think this is the most important slide of all my presentation. So if you walk out of this room later, just remember this one. This is the most important. 
What you can see is uh, it's about catheter sepsis between the group of tauridine patients and the group of saline patients. And um, well, this is about uh, real time as that it gets. Uh, you have here one year of the study, and um, you will see um, when I start the animation what happened with the patients, who got an infection, and who didn't. Uh, if they got a catheter sepsis, then they turn red. So just uh, watch, um, yeah, especially the first five to six months, because then it happens uh, the most. As you can see, uh, most of the bloodstream infections uh, are in the saline group. And, um, well, if you, you know, wait until 40 months, uh, eventually five bloodstream infections or five catheter sepsis occur in the tauridine group, uh, while in the saline group 18 infections occurred. So there's a difference of 13 bloodstream infections, and that's a significant difference. If you recalculate this in an in, 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 in risk rates, then you can say that taurine reduced the risk for catheter sepsis by more than four times when compared to saline. Um, we did this also, uh, this animation for the removal of catheters because of uh, the catheter sepsis. And you can see that now. And of course the consequence was uh, that more catheter sepsis occurred in the saline group, so also more catheter removals occurred in the saline group. And this was also significant uh, different. Then the side effects. Um, well, there were, weren't an, any really bad side effects. There were some mild side effects, such as flushings or headaches, uh, but it was very rare and it occurred in both groups. Uh, but a real serious side effects didn't occur, so it's quite safe. Um, so if you um, yeah, see the strengths of our study, then we can say it was a large study. Uh, it was a large, large group of patients, and it was a high quality design because we blinded the patients and also the investigators, and we randomized patients. Um, the population that was included in the study was a good representation of a chronic HPM population. And it was also a pragmatic uh, design that we used uh, because the daily practice remained unchanged as much as possible. For example, patients instilled the catalog solution themselves. Nobody else did that. There are also, of course, some limitations uh, to this study because there were several centers included in this study and uh, several centers may have several different hygiene protocols, so different rates in uh, infections, um, so that could have um, influenced the outcomes. But what you should remember is that tauridine reduced the catheter sepsis by more than four times when compared to saline. There were less removals of catheters in the tauridine group, and it was, a safe, um, it was safe to use. So, therefore, based on these um, factors, we recommend the use of taurine in all HPN patients. That's it. Thank you, Yannick. Um, I uh, ha well, first of all, you need to know that this drug is not FDA approved, cannot be used in this country. So I think we should have Yannick come back and speak to the FDA, frankly. <laughs> uh, but I've heard about this drug for a long time because of working with Girton, the Home Artificial Nutrition Work Group with Espen. And uh, it sounds tremendously um, Tremendously possible that if we could get it here in the U.S., uh, I think it would be a good thing for, for you. Yeah, it is yeah. yeah. Uh, but the FDA sometimes takes a while. So, <laughs> so at any rate, uh, we have a few questions. If we can get our microphones up there. Um, 
I'm, I'm not sure that the different centers is a limitation. I think there's both some advantage and perhaps some disadvantage to having different centers because you all are managed by different centers and so it's more practical for what the practice is. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I guess I wouldn't too strongly con be concerned, no, but... Uh, I, I think um, because you have more centers, you have a better representation of uh, HPM population. Exactly. But you don't know exactly what uh, the infection rates are. But yes. the difference between the infection rates uh, stays the same. That's always the diff there is always a difference between taurine and saline. Right. Yeah. Okay, yes. How would you get this if it's not FDA approved? Could you still you get it at this point at all? No. No. no so we have to get it approved. It has to I, get you FDA can smuggle approved. it in through Mexico. Unfortunately. Okay. Uh, next question? Jack has one over there. I, I, maybe I misunderstood something. But your earlier uh, slide talked about how uh, heparin and ethanol were not effective, and um, so I, I've been on um, I've been on maybe I'm wrong, I've been on heparin now for the last three or four years. The first five years I was on on a, a line. I had a, uh, just a pick line. Um, I had five infections in five years. Uh, two of them life threatening. But after that, for the last three years, I, uh, I infuse every day. I change my, I, get, I flush uh, t two saline and one ethanol every day, and I've been in infection free. So I'm wondering how this product compares to, to, uh, to ethanol. Um, yeah, the, I'm sorry, to heparin. To, to heparin. Taurine versus heparin. That's your question? Hep yeah, how does it come? I use yeah. heparin to, yeah. to, to, well, to block infections, and it's no, been very effective. I, so I think the most important part is that um, a catalog solution is used additionally uh, next to uh, the aseptic technique. So I think the most important uh, thing is always the aseptic techniques that you use to uh, yeah, connect your catheter to a uh, pump. Um, so if you are going to be better in the aseptic techniques, uh, then you sometimes don't even really need a catalog solution because you do it very good. You don't get infections because you use the aseptic techniques right. But if you compare um, um, the taurine with heparin, uh, we have done that. We have made the comparison in a trial like nine years ago. There we saw that also taurine works far better, like 90% better than heparin. So we don't use heparin anymore and also that is not recommended anymore in the guidelines. And heparin is really a drug that is supposed to prevent clot and so that's assuming that clot is associated with the infection. So uh, yeah. But what the, we also see is that when you get infections you probably also get in occlusions because of the infections so you better um, um, yeah, prevent the infections and you also prevent occlusions. Hi, Dr. Harvey, fascinating study question. Did you differentiate between infections caused by primary seeding of the line from the skin in the hub versus remote se seeding from a secondary source and did it make a difference then? Um, well, we have, looked, we have looked at exercise infections, if that's your question, but there was no difference between the groups. There's two basic sources for the infections. Most of them come from the skin, they come yeah. from the hub, versus you have secondary seeding on patients who say have Crohn's disease, something like that, get an infection, seed the line, dental abscess, seed the line and such. Did you differentiate between infections no. caused by pri primary versus secondary seeding? No, we didn't. Um, that's, I think, difficult to, yeah, to check how it was. Um, um, how, how, how did you get the bacteria from your skin or from somewhere else? Not really. It's different bacteria. When you start to see well. gram negatives and things like that, you start looking for secondary seeding. Mm -hmm. uh, when you see staph and strep, then you're looking for primary uh, hub seeding. So I'm, I'm saying when you looked at the infections, did you look at the, bac did you look at the bacteria? Yeah, we looked at the bacteria, but we didn't um, check its source where it came from. I think 
choices. And we do, we, st we have that issue of choice of drug here. <laughs> because that yours is not one of ours. So a lot of people are on uh, alcohol. There have been some with complications related to the alcohol. Some, we've had some that draw a clot out of their catheters very frequently. But of course, they're also drawing back the product. And in Europe, you don't draw blood from the catheter for routine tests, just, just if you have to identify a bacterial or fungal source. Yep. And there's a big, big feeling that drawing blood into the catheter puts you at much higher risk for infection. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, I find that in um, teaching the flushing protocol, we used heparin to reduce fiber and accumulation. Blood tends to stick to plastic. And so heparin was basically prevent hot fiber formation because that sets up the environment for catheter, you know, a bloodstream infection. But then we switched to saline, and we found it's more effective with an aggressive pulsatile flushing to eliminate blood sticking, you know, how I say to the patient, blood sticking to plastic. And so I'm wondering the introduction of it. The other thing is, is that the catheters in the last few years have gotten so small. Your double lumens now are the size of, you know, what a, um, you know, a thin single lumen was years ago. And that in itself, even with pulsatile flushing, does cause more complication because people are pulling back aggressively like with the blood draw and it differs from agency to agency. But I'm just curious, I, sometimes I find people do get confused about why do we talk antimicrobial installation as this is an option in your country, you know, versus just pulsatile flushing with saline. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, I think you're correct that uh, the flushing might uh, resolve some of these issues, biofilm formation. Um, I'm not sure if heparin really works anti-biofilm anti formations. Um, so the flushing might uh, reduce the risk for biofilm formation. Um, I know that uh, uh, um, Taurdine also prevents biofilm formation, so that's another additional yeah, um, advantage of using Taurdine. So you don't have to extra flush it or something, you just instill it and it also prevents the biofilm formation. Yeah. Does it cause the catheter to wear out sooner? Um, no, no, the catheter stay longer in. Yeah, that's not based on this trial, by the way, but we see that we see that in also other uh, studies. One more question. Um, it costs uh, more than uh, saline, uh, but because you have more infections in the saline group you pay a lot more for the resource use of uh, treating these infections. This, the costs are the same in both groups when you take the bloodstream infections with it. Okay, I think do we need to go ahead to the yes. next step. One quick uh, question. One quick one. <laughs> okay, um, in the 102 patients that you studied, um, and you found that there were five incidents of uh, catheter infection in the tyrolidine versus 18. Did you, when you did your calculations, what were the, what were the actual CRBSI rates per 1,000 catheter days? Uh, it was 0 0.3 in the tyrolidine and 1.44 in the saline group. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much, Yannick. And like I say, if, if we get this up to FDA, you gotta come back. I will. <laughs> thank you.